The SCP Foundation's Hidden Depths Day One. Dr. Lena Reyes had worked for the SCP Foundation for nearly a decade, cataloging anomalous objects and entities. Yet the deep sea submersible mission, SCP-4497, was different. They were to explore an unmapped trench, rumored to be the deepest on Earth, and retrieve any anomalous artifacts. A five-man team, herself included, descended into the abyss. The trench, far from any known oceanic chart, was named the Silent Maw by those few who knew of its existence. It was a place the Foundation believed held something ancient, older than humanity. Day two. They'd been descending for 36 hours, the sunlight long gone, leaving them in pitch blackness. The sub's floodlights pierced the water, illuminating the strange bioluminescent creatures that had adapted to the crushing depths. Depths at 9,000 meters, said Captain Rourke. Everything's stable, Doc. Dr. Reyes nodded, though she felt uneasy. As the hours passed, the sonar picked up strange readings, impossible readings, suggesting vast underwater structures. We're not alone down here, murmured Jones, the technician. He was staring at the sonar, his face pale. Something's moving out there, circling us. They peered into the inky blackness, but saw nothing. Still, the sense of being watched, of something massive lurking just beyond the lights, was growing. Day three, depths at 11,000 meters, Rourke announced, his voice tight. The sub had started to creak under the pressure, though it was designed for even deeper depths. There's a structure dead ahead. Dr. Reyes leaned forward. The sonar showed an enormous silhouette, impossibly large, dwarfing any known sea creature. As they approached, the floodlights revealed it. A vast Cyclopean city made of dark stone, its architecture alien and ancient. The city sprawled for miles, disappearing into the trench walls. This isn't just a structure, Reyes whispered. It's a graveyard. The buildings were covered in strange glyphs, unreadable but deeply unsettling. The glyphs seemed to pulse faintly, like a heartbeat, resonating in their bones. Captain, we need to document this and return immediately, Reyes ordered but the sub refused to respond. Every control, every instrument went dead. Then from the darkness, the singing began, a low mournful wail that vibrated through the hull, reverberating in their skulls. Where is it coming from? Jones shouted over the rising noise. No known source, Rourke replied, his voice shaking. The sub's lights flickered, revealing massive shadowy figures moving between the buildings. They were enormous humanoid shapes, their features obscured by the dark water. Their eyes glowed a sickly green, and they moved with a slow, deliberate grace, as if they were searching for something. Day four. The singing had intensified, a chorus of voices that seemed to come from every direction. Reyes and her team huddled in the sub, the lights flickering as the creatures drew closer. Suddenly, the sub was jolted violently. The screen flickered to life, revealing the impossible. A gigantic eye, as large as the sub itself, staring at them from the darkness. The silent maw, Rourke whispered, his face drained of color. It's awake. The sub's metal groaned, and they were pulled downward. The city beneath them began to shift, the buildings rearranging themselves as if they were alive. The sub was dragged toward an opening at the center of the city, a massive circular door lined with those same glyphs. The door began to open slowly, revealing a cavernous void, its depths unknowable. We're not making it back, are we? Jones asked, his voice trembling. Dr. Reyes couldn't answer. She knew the Foundation would classify them as lost, another mystery in the abyss. She glanced at the others, their faces pale with fear. They all understood that whatever awaited them beyond that door, no one was meant to see it and live. As they were pulled into the dark maw of the trench, the singing reached a crescendo. The last thing Dr. Reyes saw before the sub's lights went out was the door closing behind them, sealing them inside. Day 5. The SCP Foundation classified the trench as SCP-4497, Omega. No rescue attempts were made. The recording of Dr. Reyes' final moments was recovered from the sub's black box, found washed up on a distant shore months later. The metal twisted as if by enormous hands. The recording ended with a single phrase, repeated over and over in Reyes' voice. 
We were never meant to see this. We were never meant to know. The file remains classified at the highest level, a secret buried in the Foundation's archives. The silent maw is still out there, and whatever lurks within it is waiting. For what, the Foundation hopes they will never find out.